OK, yeah, let's just jump straight into the course. Here's a signal. It's a, it's a brainwave uh, electrocardiography ECG signal. Um, they measured some voltage there on the side. And uh, it's a signal across time. There's this weird kind of wiggle on the signal that I want to get out. I know I don't care about it. I want this kind of the, the, big, the big wave. Um, that's what I want to get out of this, this signal. I want to process the signal in a way so that I smooth it. How would you do it? So the one option is to do what you and you kind of said, is to use a low-pass filter. We generate the signal, we go into a lab, and we build a low-pass filter. This is a picture of a Salon key circuit. That is a low-pass filter. I looked it up on Wikipedia. Um, and it looks like this. So I need to go in and I need to weld the circuit together. And then I have a low-pass filter. Then I need to go back and I need to generate this signal in some way and apply it you know, to this little port on my low-pass filter. OK, and then I get something out that's smoothed. OK, quite a bit of pain and suffering. Even, even your thing of getting a capacitor, I need to go to the third floor lab, find a capacitor. Oh, and they don't allow me to actually go into that lab because I can't solder. They only allow me to teach programming and math courses. So I'm not even allowed in there. OK, so I can't smooth the signal. OK, cool. You guys have all proposed um, wonderful things. And that is the right answers for uh, if you've done a course in continuous signal processing. Go and build the circuit, smooth it out. Wonderful. But I'm lazy. I don't want to do that, right? I want to do things on a computer. Okay, and that's actually what we're going to do in this whole course. A lot of this course is going to take what you did in your continuous signal processing courses, and we're just going to program simple programs to um, do very similar type of things, but on a computer. Okay? And when I say on a computer, that also means on a CPU or on a microprocessor in space. All of those things are kind of the same. We want to program things in order to solve that, that, those same types of problems. Simple solutions to do this on a computer. How would you do it? Simplest thing. Yes. Okay, awesome. That's what we'll do. I accept your proposal. But we're going to take some window, and then we're going to just get these numbers, which are just numbers, right? We're going to get them on the computer, and we're going to average them. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to move this window a little bit on, say there, or maybe what, just one sample if we're slightly fancy. And again, we're going to take the average of the points in that window. And that's what we'll do. OK, cool. You can run to the lab and find your capacitor. We see who wins. I'm just going to do this um, in Python. OK, so here is uh, a little Python script. It loads the, loads the ECG data from this, um, from this website. So it's just processing the text file. And then it creates the plot. OK. so. X, capital X, I think, is the signal. Yeah, capital X is the signal. And then Y is the signal that we want to, to filter. And basically, I'll just write a little loop that goes from zero. So starting at that first frame, starting at time point zero. Okay. I'm going to take one window, and I'm going to move that window across. Okay. Up until the end of the signal. So up until the length of X. I need to subtract the window because... <laughs> When we get to the end, I can't actually can't get a window there. Previous slide, we're going, to, we're going to stop just at this point when we reach the last window. So I have a little um, for loop there. Um, let's just run that to make sure that it works. My Python skills aren't too rubbish. OK, this is great. For I, OK, so it's brute intelligence here. OK, cool. Let's just run around it. OK, cool. I can write a for loop. Congratulations. OK, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to strip out one part, like a little section of the, of the window there. And I'm going to do that is I'm just going to start at the start of the window, which is I. Grammarly auto-completes this I and makes it a capital letter. Wonderful. I plus window, that's the window length. OK, so I've just stripped out like that little portion of the window that I want. Just stripped out this little portion from the signal X. Everyone with me? How do I average it? Have you done Python before? Uh, 
mean, that's a good guess. It's also correct, okay, np.mean. np is numpy, so I just get the mean. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that little, this little thing here, and I'm just going to add it to the y signal, okay? So this is my filter value is equal to that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do y.append filter value. And then let's check if this thing actually runs. Okay, it's run. Wonderful. Okay, and then I'll just plot that signal. And boom, we get it out. Okay, a nice smooth signal. Well done. Okay, digital signal processing solved. Okay, you found your capacitor. You've recorded the signal, but I think I was a little bit faster. Okay, we can also, we can play around with this a little bit, right? What happens if I make the window shorter? What's going to happen? It's going to filter less. That's right. So it's going to be more squiggly. And that's true. It's not as squiggly as the original signal. Well, it almost is. Okay, so it's going to filter less. Um, what happens if I make the window a lot bigger? Right. So this is a window with 50 samples. That's right. And then if I make it 100, we get to your solution, which is to just like ignore life, right? To just say, ignore the signal. I think if we make this 100 or so, then we lose some properties. Okay, and what we'll actually see in this course is that what I just did, even the simple, the, let's just get the right one, the nice one here, the 10 sample one, this is actually a low pass filter. It's just a digital low pass filter that I could implement in three lines of Python. Okay, so it does something similar to the Salen key um, circuit, except I could um, do it in code. So that's like super nice and makes me happy on the inside because I don't have to go to the welding laboratory. Okay, is everyone happy? And so in this course, what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of what you've done in continuous, si continuous signal processing, but we're going to do it uh, in computer programs, specifically in, in Python. Um, awesome.